With automotive infotainment screens seemingly getting bigger every year, watching video while parked and charging your EV is becoming a thing. Tesla has allowed web browsing and watching video while parked since the debut of the Model S. But for EV riders with other electric vehicle brands that use Android Auto, it's a little more complicated to get video up and running while parked. At the time of this video's posting, Android Auto didn't offer any automotive web browsers or video apps in Google Play. Thankfully, Google does allow Android users to sideload video-capable apps outside of the Play Store on their smartphones that will work with Android Auto. Sideloaded apps work just like regular Android apps, but they haven't been vetted or approved by Google. So keep that in mind. The risk of installing a sideloaded app with malware or poor coding and performance is higher. Keeping those cautions in mind, I'm currently using three sideloaded apps. One is called the Android Apps Downloader, or AAAD for short. It lets me sideload other apps not in the Google Play Store, including an Android Auto web browser I'm using called CarStream. While CarStream isn't as refined as Chrome, it gets the job done, letting me watch YouTube or surf websites like CNN, CNET, or EVRider.TV while parked. Now, I want to stress very strongly, no one should ever consider watching video or surfing the web while driving. That's not the purpose of this video. When using CarStream, I avoid entering any sort of personal information such as account logins. Although you might, for example, be able to watch Amazon Prime, I'm personally not willing to trust my account information to a web browser coded by an individual. So, as the old saying goes, caveat emptor. There are potential risks to running Android apps that have not been vetted by Google. Perhaps the most useful side load app I've found is AA Mirror Plus, and I'm not recommending it necessarily over other apps, it's just the one I happen to use. As the name implies, what it does is exactly what you would expect. It goes ahead and it projects your Android screen right on your smartphone. Now where this can get really useful is when you pair it with a keyboard, a Bluetooth keyboard, and a Bluetooth keyboard mouse. I found this one will really allow you to up your productivity. Let's say, for example, you want to respond to an email. All I'd have to do is use my Bluetooth mouse to compose my new email. But rather than henpecking on a little tiny screen, now I can do it on something that I can actually read. As you can probably imagine, where this gets really powerful is all the different things that you can do with it. Not just email, but you could do spreadsheets. Uh, obviously, you could go ahead and watch video on it as well. So uh, it does include a full version of Chrome because, again, all you're doing is mirroring your screen. So you can go ahead and use Chrome just as you normally would. If you've got an Android remote desktop app, you can even log into Windows. So for example, as you can see, I can even call up my desktop video editing program and do a little EV Rider editing. Now, of course, this is all assuming you have a robust 5G connection. Anything less than that will be an exercise in frustration due to the lag you'll experience. Keeping in mind that side-loaded apps have not been vetted or approved by Google, there's that reminder again. If you do want to investigate downloading a few to run on Android Auto, the process I used is pretty simple. Download and install the AAAD app. Then it's as simple as following the directions inside the app. A link to the app is in this post at evrider.tv. Once the app is installed, you can then install the CarStream web browser or a host of other apps. AAAD lets you download one sideloaded app a month for free, or you can pay a modest fee to install more sideloaded apps. Another thing to keep in mind is that Google is constantly updating Android and Android Auto.
So while my side loaded apps were working as intended at the time this video was posted in July of 2022, that could change if Google pushes an update that is incompatible with the side loaded apps. If you run into any difficulties, be sure to check each side loaded app's website. The CarStream web browser isn't perfect, by the way. It struggles to properly render some web pages correctly and has some audio sync lag when watching video. You might be able to eliminate or improve the lag by tweaking the frame resolution settings in the app. The web browser comes preloaded with a YouTube bookmark. Other bookmarks are relatively easy to set up and are touch friendly. The Mirror app I'm using also has some slight audio lag, although when using it for productivity apps like spreadsheets or Word, that doesn't matter. To all you Apple CarPlay fans out there, since I don't own an iPhone, I'm not about to offer any advice on how to get video onto the screen via CarPlay, but a quick Google search or two or heading over to YouTube will certainly yield a few results from others that do have iPhones. And one more time, I want to stress, never, ever attempt to surf the web or watch video when you're driving. Again, the purpose of this is only to illustrate how it can be done when safely parked. If you found this episode of EV Rider useful, please give it a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel so I can bring you more adventures in EV motoring. Thanks so much for watching.